Hi, Gary Steerman. Time for another update from Prophecy Watchers. I want to talk about the emotions involved in studying the Bible today. As a matter of fact, emotion plays a very, very big role in your Bible study. I'm holding up here the July 2017 Prophecy Watcher, and the cover article is Peter, Paul, and the church. And I want to start out by reading <clears throat> from 2 Peter chapter 3 uh, and beginning in verse 11. There's a fascinating study here, comment by Peter as he's talking about the day of the Lord. <clears throat> and verse 11 says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, speaking of, of the created world, uh, what matter of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness. He's talking about one's lifestyle here. Looking for and hastening hastening unto the coming day of the Lord wherein the heavens uh, being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless we uh, according to His promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And we're getting to the part now that's interesting to me. Verse 14 says, Wherefore, in other words, in view of this, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of Him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Notice that. Uh, the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. We're waiting for the Lord to come. We're waiting uh, uh, diligently (laughs) and breathlessly in some cases. We want the Lord to come. Nevertheless, uh, when the Lord delays His coming, it allows more time for many to come to Christ. And that's what Peter is saying. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. In other words, as Christ delays His coming for the church, It it simply gives the opportunity for many to be saved. But here's the key verse. Uh, Peter is talking about Paul. And he says, as also in all his epistles, by the way Paul wrote 13 epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do other scriptures unto their own destruction. So what Peter is talking about here is the emotional aspect of the study of Bible prophecy. And I want to make a statement. And it's this. Had Paul not written his 13 epistles we would not know about the function and the purpose of the church. Think about it. Uh, Paul wrote the pastoral epistles. He wrote all the epistles on justification, sanctification, glorification, the timing of events in the church. He wrote about the rapture very clearly. Nobody else did that. Uh, The Lord gave Paul a very, very specific uh, group of teachings, much different from the teachings he gave to the other apostles, in particular Peter, who says as also in all his epistles, speaking of them, in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Well, of course they are. And that's the discussion today. There's a lot of emotion in the study of the Bible. And I want to go back to a statement in Ephesians that I think really illustrates uh, why we get so emotional when we study Bible prophecy. Ephesians chapter 1 beginning in verse 7 says, "...in whom we have redemption through His blood," of course speaking of Christ, "...according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will." according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. Paul's writing about the mystery of the will of God. And he's saying God gave us the keys to solve the mystery of his will. That is if we study, 
if we're diligent in prayer, if we're obedient, these things will be open to us. Now, you come to the next verse, uh, Ephesians 1.11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. <clears throat> The mystery of His will. What is the mystery of His will? I'm going to read verse 10 again. Here it is. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in Him. This is uh, Paul making what I consider to be a very... um, difficult to understand statement about the will of God and the gathering of all things into one. It's called the mystery of His will. But notice Paul uses the word dispensation. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times. You know, I'm a dispensationalist. Meaning that I think God has approached the plan of salvation over the millennia in different ways at different times. Each of these times we call a dispensation or an economy. And it's fascinating to me that in in his 13 epistles Paul uses the word dispensation four different times. The 1 Corinthians 9.17 he speaks of a dispensation of the gospel as having been committed to him personally. And this is fascinating. That's why Peter said our brother Paul has written many things difficult to be understood because to Paul and Paul only was committed a dispensation of the gospel. Here in Ephesians 1.10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times. So here uh, uh, Paul is speaking of a dispensation of the fullness of times in the context of the existence of the church on earth. The church is finite. It had its beginning at Pentecost. It will have its end at the rapture. And we call it the church age. It is a dispensation. Paul uses that very word, a dispensation or an economy. Ephesians 3, 2, if you go just a little farther over, uh, you read this. Uh, I'll start with Ephesians 3, 1. For this cause I, Paul, prisoner uh, of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given uh, me to you word. Paul's saying flatly that the dispensation of the grace of God, that's the dispensation in which we now live is given to him. And I take it to him alone. This is fascinating and finally the fourth time Paul uses the word dispensation he it does it in Colossians 1.25 where he refers to the dispensation of God. And again, uh, linking that to his own uh, ministry. Well, in the article that I have written <clears throat> for the July 2017 uh, Prophecy Watcher, I talk about Peter, Paul, and the church. And the article is centered on the emotions that is the emotions of studying Bible prophecy. Uh, you want the Lord to come today if possible. Wouldn't, wouldn't you love to see the rapture today? On the other hand, uh, you want the Lord's will to be fully worked out in the dispensation of times. And the art of watchful waiting, as we call it, is the art of the faith that we have in Christ. I would love to see Christ come in the next 10 minutes. On the other hand, I want him to be able to do his will over a uh, period of time that he's already committed uh, to his plan. I know nothing about the end of that, uh, that time uh, gap that be- between uh, law and kingdom, which we call the age of grace, but I'm watching. And the art of watchful waiting is the art of faith. It involves, uh, I think, a mastery of the emotions. Uh, In the article that I've written, uh, I spend a lot of time talking about some of the emotionality that I have viewed. And by the way, you yourself have probably viewed 
uh, some emotional debate lately about uh, the timing of the rapture. Is it pre-trib? <clears throat> Is it mid-trib? Is it post-trib? Is it pre-wrath? Is it this? Is it that? You've been in on all the articles. You've been online. You have seen people uh, lecturing, <clears throat> sometimes at the top of their lungs, points of view that uh, you simply don't agree with. And there's a tendency to get very emotional about this and say, my way, I, I've thought a lot about this, folks, and my way is the right way. Well, I, I want you to know I'll, I will never <laughs> say that because <clears throat> I don't know when he's coming. I understand something, and by the way, very little of the times and seasons. I've watched the regathering of the 12 tribes, but it's not complete. I've watched the foundation of the state of Israel, 1947-48. It's not complete. I've watched the wars in the Middle East. They're not complete. I'm watching Europe and the riots and the economic warfare that's going on uh, between the Orient and the West. I'm watching all of this and the Bible has a little something to say about each and every aspect of, of uh, this watchful waiting which Paul refers to, and I'm going to go back to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ. <clears throat> that includes us. But it also includes a number of other events that we know nothing about. Jesus was working a miraculous set of parameters toward one event, which we call the rapture of the church. But think about all the elements on the face of planet Earth that have to be brought together at a precise moment when the dispensation comes to an end. And that's what Paul is talking about, and that's what Peter said our, about Paul. Our brother Paul has written many things that are difficult to be understood. And the reason I'm talking about this today is to say, be calm, relax. The Lord's got it all under control. We think we're nearing the end of the dispensation. We're ending that dispensation in what Paul comes, calls the, the fullness of times. And yet we cannot set a date. In fact we would not want to set a date because who knows how many other people have to come to Christ or are included in the plan of God that as I speak may not have the slightest inkling that they're included in the plan of God. And so we're praying <clears throat> that this, the dispensation of grace, might be brought together quickly but not too quickly because the Lord knows exactly what He's doing. How can we understand the rapture? Watchful waiting. And by the way, that's what we're doing. We're watching. You be watching too. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.